Knowing that marriage is the will of God for your life is one thing. Choosing a life partner is another thing. When it comes to marriage, it is not something that you just submit to or by your emotion. God should be in the front seat in your life. That is why Proverbs 3, 5, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. 3, 6, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Trusting in God means you submit your will to him. When you see someone you like or one that comes promising to you for marriage, don't jump to a conclusion. God shows signs that he is interested in you accepting the person or not. God's will is found in his word. What he says in his word always gives you the answer you need to know who God has chosen for you. God is interested in those who are found in his Eden. This means the person is from his family. He or she is a son or daughter. If the person can't be identified as one of his own, you are sure to know that God is not interested in accepting him or her. We can see this clearly from God's pattern of faith of old. Genesis 24 2-4 And Abraham said unto thy eldest servant of his house, that ruled over all that he had, Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh, and I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven, and the God of the earth, and thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell. But thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son Isaac. God is totally against marriage between those who worship him and those who do not know him, because these marriages will bring evil and will estrange the believer from the relation with God. Remaining in such a relation will make you drift away from God, especially for women. Choosing an unbelieving spouse can destroy your faith in God, and God loves you too much to lose to the snare of the enemy. God wants you to stay away from every relationship that can lead you one day to this evil thought. That is why God advised us to pick from among his family. God says, 2 Corinthians 6.14 be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? God is not interested when the person is an outsider, because they will not appreciate his values and beliefs, and it makes God appear biased. God is interested in you having a quality life and home, especially for your happiness. God wants you to stay away from anything unclear for your good because there are many values that God loves that all unbelievers will be against and will not encourage to do. He even says, If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hatheth you. He wants your home preserved for his glory. You will be happy when you are married to a husband and wife who is from God's people and who worship him truly. Number two, the person supports your purpose in life and calling. The biblical text continues from Genesis 24. The servant said to him, Suppose the woman is not willing to follow me to this land. Should I take your son back to the land from where you came? Then Abraham said to him, Beware that you do not take my son back there. The Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and the land of my birth, and who spoke to me and who swore to me, saying, To your descendants I will give this land. He will send his angel before you, and you will take a wife for my son there. But if the woman is not willing to follow you, then you will be free from this my oath. Only do not take my son back there. Genesis 24, 5, 8. The call of Isaac was to inherit the land of Cana. One of the most important qualifications to know if the person is perfect for me is that the person has the same purpose. The person you should marry must be faithful to God and will be ready to join hands together with you to fulfill the purpose. When God spoke about the creation of the woman in Genesis 3, he said, it is not good that man should be alone but let us find a helpmate for him. 
That means someone suitable to help him in his purpose. God is interested in you living a purpose-driven life. God is interested in a person that enhances your progress in your purpose and calling for you. The purpose is not about how much you make or how much you have saved in the bank. It is about clarity. Because this person has not found clarity of purpose, he or she will discourage you in your zeal and deviate you from that calling and purpose from God. Anyone who is in search of himself will never be God's will for your marriage. Now you can begin to see the signs around them if this person is self-centered, but not purpose-driven, because the person will draw away from that vision of God. Number three, the person is a man or woman of character. The daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Now may it be that the girl to whom I say, please let down your jar so that I may drink, and who answers drink, and I will water your camels also. May she be the one whom you have appointed your servant Isaac, and by this I will know that you have shown loving kindness to my master. Genesis 24, 10-14 Don't be deceived by anyone that tells you that character doesn't happen in marriage. Many pick foolishly from bodily figures. God's plan for selection has always been character-driven. Exodus 18:21. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men, such as God-fearing, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them, to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. Does the person fear God? Is he a person of integrity? Is there a person that has dealt with covetousness and greed? In Abraham's story, Rebecca was chosen because of her character, a lazy, indifferent, and arrogant girl who would never do what the servant wanted her to see. He was capable to draw water for himself for his camels, but he wanted to use this opportunity to identify the girl with the noblest character from the town. The lifestyle of the person reflects the character of Christ. What trend does character align with the character of Christ is the life of love and honor. This is the bedrock of marriage not the physical appearance or the person's talent. Number four, the person is obedient to his or her parent. Ephesians 6, 1, 2. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Especially when you are young, you lack wisdom and experience and need important decisions for the rest of your life. Maybe this is extreme for them, but it is also extreme for us when children don't consider their parents' opinions concerning their marriage. It is wise to talk to your parents, to listen to their advice for your marriage, and how blessed the guy or the girl whose parents are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ and can advise them from the Holy Scriptures. This point will go a long way to determine the success of your marriage. A parent's blessing is so important. If the person cannot show honor and respect at home to his or her parents, it shows he or she has never submitted the training of his or her parents. And when there is no training, there is no future for anyone. Obedience is better than sacrifice, and to listen is better than the fat of rams. Marriage thrives on a listening spirit between both people. Number five, the answer of peace. Having a strong sense of peace is an indicator that you are in line with God's plan for your life, and let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace. Colossians 3.15 God leads us in the frequency of peace and rest. If you both have a strong peace or reassurance that you are supposed to be together, but if he seems like a great guy, but some a red button on your inside, pray and inquire about what God is trying to tell you. If you still don't have peace about the relationship, this could be a sign that he's not the one or it's the wrong timing to pursue a relationship.